co-host hasn't returned in months. I guess it's time to finally delete the channel. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Don't worry, I was dead. That was some... That was some spooky shit. You were dead? Yeah. How? Well, I stopped breathing. I mean, how are you here? Anyways. You got a haircut! What happened? I got, like, a lot of them cut. So, ready for review? Sure! Well, I forget about the beyond. All right. Back in the saddle again. Yep. We rise once more like an old man on Viagra. That's a little disturbing, but what do we got this week? Well, this week we got the Marguerite Player's Guide. Step into wonderful woods. Alright, so is this like a campaign setting, or...? Oh, it? it's a part of Kobold Press's Midgard campaign setting. Oh, cool. It's a sub-area. It's quite interesting. The Player's Guide offers some spicy new races. Yeah, there's a, quite a few of them. There is the Illicids, I think it's pronounced. The Illicids? I don't know how to pronounce them. I just pronounce them Dark Sides. You can just spell yeah. it that way. They're, they're basically centaurs, but a deer. Yes, and elves. Mm -hmm. The elf part is the upper body. The deer is the lower body. You might recognize these creatures from the Tome of Beasts. Mm -hmm. They're a low-level enemy, but here you can finally play as one. And uh, Then there's the Tree People. Yeah, right. Who are, yeah. The, the Pioneers, they're tree people. They're yeah. like, the closest you'll get to a dry head so far. Mm -hmm. And then there's possibly copyrighted fringing Sonic the Hedgehog material. I don't know how to pronounce it. Enchina, Enchenda, or what the hell. Yeah, we can't. Arena, sorry, Arena. That's how you pronounce them. And they are like Sonic the Hedgehog. That's what all the memes will be about, folks. Trust us. Yeah, here. Look at that. And we're going to post an image of it, and then we're going to post an image of the Acelid's... Weird nipple piercing, like, listen, you're gonna go bare shirt, don't have a nipple piercing. Yeah. If you're bare chest, like, that shit could get caught in something. Don't, don't give the Leave furries me material. No, Steve, don't mention the furries. Also, Steve. Yeah? What do you think is more furry, the hedgehog people or the half-deer people? I mean, it, okay, they're like 33% non-furry, and those are like 50% furry. I th think it would depend on, I think the, the deer people are more brony furries, and then the Wait, hedgehog. no, they're deers, they're deers, they're, they're, they're deers. You think bronies deers. care? They you deers. think they care? I think they would, actually. I think that one faction would care, most people on Earth. Anyways, let's uh, keep going. Next, title card. Subclasses. Subclasses, all right. The old Marguerite Player's Guide offers a subclass for every single class. What about the monk? What about him? Anyways, my personal favorite is the Griffin Scout, a ranger archetype that lets you have your own semi-unholy mixture of bird and feline. I'm kind of partial to the uh, Corsair Mage. Yes, and of course, I also deeply enjoy the Circle of the Oaks. You can be the tree, and you can turn a whole forest into beautiful, wonderful grove. And I also really like the Pact of the Old Wood for See? the Warlock. See, my Viagra joke is reference. Hey. Another thing that's quite awesome is that there are two new barbarian subtypes. Unfortunately, they're restricted to only bear folk. However, Cobalt Press went ahead. They made sure to add a little section that tells you can reskin shit. Thank God. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people know that on their own, but thankfully you told us we can. Hey, hey, listen, some people, if it's not in the rule book, word for word, they yes. will not do it. I gotta be honest. I've got Midgard Heroes Handbook, which we reviewed, I think. Yes, yes. we have. Yes, we have. And I thought the barbarians in this were better than the one in that book. I think the options, too, are a little more in line with the post Sanifier's Guide Everything, Ranger... Update like how yeah. they have classes and like they had uh, their own pack spells. Well, not pack spells, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. These ones also have in that book, so it's a nice. It falls more in line. There was some experimental stuff in Midgard Heroes Handbook, which I do like, but this is a more modern, more refined. It's more, more, mm. it's more accurate. I, I'm going to say, oh, there are parts that I still like better in Midgard Heroes Handbook, but this all is good. Also, I'm not sure there's a fire subclass now, but. 
They've got so many who cares. Yeah. I'm also going to say I do recommend this book. I, I think it could be a very good addition to any uh, campaign. Right now, my main beef, though, is that the bear folk as a species is not in this book despite her prominence in two subclasses. Mm -hmm. That is an issue. Hell, the rogue subtype for the arena is pretty damn awesome because it modifies Shillelagh. The only problem is for other races is that it needs a burrow speed, but you can obviously swap that out. Next, we're going to look at some of the spells and other features in this book. And we're back. Now, this book includes a few new spells for most classes. Mm -hmm. Nothing too major. A lot of them are woodsy, you know, focused on nature. This, this book does have a general foresty theme, yes. you could say. It's almost that like the Mercury Forest applies as it is. Feats are very flavorful. A few of them are too bound to Midgard. Actually, I'd say most of them can just be reworked any sudden. Mm -hmm. Well, except the ones that deal with the shadow roads as much. That's a little more difficult. That's a bit more specific. Yes. But you can conjure a fey hound, which is pretty badass. Summon mm -hmm. a giant spectre dog. You can, can also, teleport. It's awesome. You can also guarantee people get lost in a forest. Yes. And you can slow them down. And you can make the forest even more powerful. Yeah, so, like, the druid seems da dangerously powerful. Druids and rangers. Oh, they got this. They got the... You, you thought they got the short end in the, in the normal player's guide. They got the short end hell and the... Uh, Hero's Handbook for Midgard, kinda, to be honest. But here, oh! Full oh. force, Druid Gang, rise up! Now, oh, one other thing, just for you rangers out there. A selection, a menagerie of challenge rate and one-fourth beasts. Yes. Such as the giant honeybee. Or the giant mongoose. Yes. The so, if you're fighting a giant snake, or a giant creature that's allergic to beast things. This is it. This is the, this is the book. Mongooses are going to fuck you up. Now, the only thing I was wondering about is why is there a bad boom in this selection of beasts? So, <laughs> there's Matt Corley, Dan Dillon, John... So I can't pronounce that. Sawarski, Dennis... Yep, she's so, there. So and Mike there. Wilhelm. Which one of you pushed for that? Yeah. I want to know. Please, someone find out for me. We're genuinely curious. Myself. Add us on Twitter. What ranger wanted a baboon so badly? Obviously, these beasts can also be well shaped into, so it's nice. Yeah. Now, other things this book adds are some magic items, a nice little intro story for a dwarf talking about raising griffins to ride and get, acquiring the eggs. Mm -hmm. Even a couple stat blocks for him and his griffin companion. Characters okay. like that are always nice. I might add them to a game one day. Obviously, <laughs> you're not going to be world ending, and uh, I'm going to keep things in line. <laughs> but all in all, this is a good book. It's not the biggest book, but I like it. All right. Uh, Back to the YouTube game. Next week, we will review the full Margrave adventure. Obviously, I have not a chance to run it, so uh, this is just going to be a first impressions.